Alright, we're live. Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, Alright, welcome. I'm SRD underscore 27 and I'm going to show a speedrun of Postal 4. It's the latest sequel to Postal 2. It's a slice of life game where we'll see Postal Dude carrying out uh, everyday chores. Anyway, my guess will just start. So, 3, 2, 1, start. Okay, so this game is very bugged. This story right at the very start here, I'll press a quick save in the loading screen. And something amazing will happen immediately, right at the very start of the run. Wait for it. And here we go. Instead of starting the game normally, we are in this thing called a super secret death room. It's kind of like a debug room. You have like a bunch of buttons that let you teleport a bunch. And I'll increase the volume for a bit just so you guys can listen to this. I'm Rob. I'm 99% sure this crash is not my fault, but I have been informed to tell you that it is indeed my fault. It's all Rob's fault. Yes, so basically when you quick save at the start of the loading screen, uh, you'll yeah, you get sent to this death room instead of uh, doing the normal gameplay. And this lets you teleport to a bunch of stuff very quickly and it's a very, very powerful speedrun strats, obviously. So, instead of carrying on the story straight away, I'm just going to get a detour to this Kani Island. It's a place that normally you can only access in Wednesday instead of Monday. First thing I'm going to do is to piss in this power box. Very important to piss. Can't do anything else. Okay, now that is done, I'm going to grab a rocket launcher. And I'm going to do that for pack. So, the rocket launcher is a very, very, very important weapon for this speedrun. Now, I'm going to death warp. And... The death warp in this game, it doesn't load the save. Instead, it's just gonna, it's gonna warp you back to the, your previous save position. But it doesn't actually load the game. So the rocket that I took earlier, I still have it in my inventory. And now that we got the rocket, we're just gonna start the story. Okay, so I teleported to the prison area, which is like an area uh, for the... Monday story and the story here is a postal for he's now homeless he just uh his car just got stolen and he's looking for a job so we go to this job agency and we're gonna get uh multiple jobs to do in the first day okay and before we continue i'm gonna take this collectible to get money and buy a couple of items for later on and i'm just gonna do that work back to the previous safe spot Right in the front of the prison. Okay, so the first errand is a uh, prison, so we're going to be prison guard. Super black white, uh, you'll see what I'll do with cats later. Anyway, here's the first character we will meet. The warden. He's a very disciplined guy, cleaning his uh, working tools as we see here. Anyway, so we're a prison guard now. Uh, there's a bit of dialogue that we'll have to wait, and in the meantime, I'm going to show you uh, one of the first exploits. So, we'll do this push-up action, and we'll press the rectal button. If we get lucky, we can clip the door. Ah, I didn't get it this time. Anyway, what I did just now, the push-up, it's good. It's a very, very broken exploit that uh, you're going to see soon. But anyway, the story here, uh, they require us to press a key code, and you can see. Now, very important thing coming up here. Just before I'm going to press the key code, I'm going to uh, use the catnip, which will uh, make the game run in slow motion for a while. And because the game is in slow motion, I could go through this door before it closed. Oh wait, uh, did I mess up? I actually messed up there. Okay, I'm just gonna do the exploit. Uh, I actually messed up a bit. Oh well, whatever. Uh, anyway, 
that door is gonna be closing soon and I could have gone I could have got past there if I aimed quick enough, but anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, four, five, two, and I just fixed it anyway by using another exploit where I go out of bounds. Okay, uh... Oh wait, uh, yeah. So, the push-up earlier that I showed. Uh, it's useful to clip through walls like this, well only... But we're going to use it for an even bigger exploit later on. Okay, so wait, what number was that again? 924 was it? Oh crap, I forgot what the number is. Uh was it 82? Well, uh hang on. Crap, I forgot what the number is. Uh, this is a big issue. Sissy. You don't see anything. You guys don't see anything. Uh, we have a commercial break right now. You guys don't see anything. Okay, it's 827. <laughs> Alright, I just forget the passcode earlier. So the passcode is randomly generated. And if I don't yeah, if I don't remember it, uh, I can't see it anymore. Because the exploit made it on a... Normally, the passcode is shown in this uh, pause menu here. But... Uh, because of the ex out of bound exploit that I did, uh, the passcode is gone somehow, and I have to remember it in my head. Anyway, we're just gonna do another of these uh, push up exploit to clip through thin walls, and we go. So normally you have to walk through like a uh, quite a long prison hall and meet a bunch of enemies in the way, but we're just gonna use this clip and access the wall immediately to enter the passcode. And that's it for the first errand. Okay, so that errand just now is a lot more complicated than you guys uh, would have seen. There's a lot of complicated strats in it, which I don't have the time to explain. But anyway, moving on to the next errand now. Earlier, the push-up exploit here, it's a very broken because when you combine with multiple other game mechanics, you get to fly. You see it just now? I, I push up and then I do this thing called the ragdoll. And uh, combined with the whip, weapon wheel that turned the game to slow motion, and I fly a very, very, very high distance. And to stop me from flying, I press, the, uh, I use the quick save and quick load. Now, so just to give you guys an idea of what happened, I was here earlier, right here, and in like a few seconds, I fly here immediately, right to next to the next uh, next errand. So yeah, in case it's not obvious, we're going to do that over and over multiple times. But anyway, time for the next error. Okay, our next job is to collect animals. So we need to collect three cats and three dogs. We'll have a couple of cats here. Cats is simple to collect. You'll just uh, walk to it straight away and it'll be in your inventory. Okay, there's another cat. Oh, three. There's another one, I think. Ah, there you go. We need four. Like, the mission only need three, but we need four for one more for uh, another purpose later. Now, the dogs. Dogs is a bit harder to collect. You can't just grab it like that. So, we have to bait them by kicking them and have it chase us and now I'm going to commit suicide while the dogs are around here now that the dogs are sleeping I could collect them oh you guys make me wondering isn't it a, isn't it a pacifist run? a pacifist run right? see this I didn't kill any animals nope it's still a pacifist guys for some reason the dogs that uh Anything that got killed while you are uh, committing suicide, it doesn't count as a kill, according to the game. You got another that was the last cat. Take care of the dog, brother. Uh, the dog Looks like meat's back on the menu. Hey, Bobby. Okay, and that's it. Three cats, three dogs. Excellent work, my friend. You've done it.
Okay, uh, another push of flying. So now, the next mission is Sewers, which is in the west here. I mean east, yeah, so it's in the east. But instead, we are going to fly north. Okay, because the actual sewer interiors is in the north. Anyway, there's gonna be quite a lot of loading in this run too, because uh, the game is not an optimized game, and we're also gonna do a lot of quick, safe, quick little struts like this one. Anyway, so, I'm here up in the north, the g uh, you can't even see the cursor in the post menu, even though the sewers is supposed to be here. But that's because the sewer interior is in the north here, and when you fall out of bounds, the game will try to fix your position by sending you to the right loading zone, and that will get you to the sewers. Now, the sewers is a very, 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 very broken mission. So, first of all, I'm going to use this thing called Cat Rocket. Uh, it lets you control the, uh, the rocket's direction. Now, the errand itself. You see, I have to fix the light bulbs, uh, clean the pipe clocks, and install pump parts. But instead, what I'm going to do... You see these boxes that has the text debug in it? Debug. What does it mean? So I just send my cat rocket through those boxes and see, all of those stuff are complete immediately. Basically those are like leftover debug figures that the dev left in the game. And if you go through it, then it completes the mission immediately for you without actually doing the game. Although you still have to do the one of the actual objective just once. So I'm just gonna use my rocket to clear one of those pipe clocks and that will finish the game. Finish this errand straight away. And done. Anyone who played Postal 4 will know like how long this errand is. Like you have to do a bunch of stuff inside the sewers and all. But nope, all you do is just shoot your cat rocket into the steam box boxes. <laughs> and that's it for the day. So that's all the three errands for Monday, and we can end the day. Okay, time for the second day, Tuesday. So again, in the after the starting cutscene, I'm just going to press quick save while in the loading screen. And the game will send me to this uh, death room immediately, which lets me teleport straight away. So again, here's the death room. So, uh, just a bit of things. Uh, there's some buttons here that let you warp through multiple days, but these buttons, to do this button, you need to unlock the cheat mode, uh, which is cheating, and obviously we don't allow it in the run. So, while the teleport buttons, we could do it without uh, cheating. So, it's fine to do these teleport buttons, but we can't do the day warp buttons, i say. That requires you to unlock the cheat mode. Anyway, time to move on through the day. Okay, let me just collect one more cat as a backup. You guys know why later on. Okay, a feature... Uh, probably don't need this one. anyway. Alright, I'm gonna go through the subway and we're going to carry on the story. Now, when I walk through the stairs, it will trigger a cutscene. But to bypass the cutscene, I'm just going to do a ragdoll jump. So, ragdoll jump is... Kind of a debug feature, but the game purposely, the dev purposely left it, and that leads you to do so many exploits with it. And I'm going to trigger the cutscene with a scooter instead of just walking through it. And you see the scooter in the cutscene. Now that's only a minor part of this exploit. The bigger part of this exploit is coming up soon. So the, the after this cutscene, you get teleported to a different place, a faraway place. But because you're in the scooter earlier. Your body is actually still in the scooter, so you just dismount from it, and you get teleported back. And this gets us close to the next errand that we need to do. It's called the Border Smuggler. And bam, we're back. So yeah, again, we got teleported away from this place earlier, but we got uh, we could like immediately teleport back again.
Okay, for the next errand, the story is we're going to smuggle uh, multiple illegal immigrants through the border wall by using a slingshot. Okay, again, another board wreck will jump here. There's an intro cutscene that I don't want to trigger because it's a bit slow to do it. Oh, important thing to do here. The tranquilizer rounds. Okay, so there was supposed to be a slingshot here. But because I didn't trigger the in intro cutscene, it's invisible. But it still works. The slingshot is actually still there in the game. It's just invisible. And you see that uh, those NPCs sitting here. So it's actually kind of hard to do this uh, errand without the slingshot being feasible. Because the slingshot will give you an aiming light. But now the aiming light is missing. And we have to aim it without the light. Oh, there's a couple of soldiers here. Uh, oh, they're not aim assistance. Okay, so those those patrol guards, uh, if they caught us uh, smuggling these uh, immigrants, then a bunch of enemies gonna pop up and this mission gonna be a lot harder. So I put them to sleep in uh, with a tranquilizer round. Cause uh, this is a pacifist run. I don't want to kill them with regular bullets. But I'll just put them to sleep instead. And that doesn't count as a kill. So I actually put in my screen, I put like an overlay of a cross here to replace the aiming light that went invisible because of the glitch. So without the aiming light, it's gonna be very very hard to aim properly. And okay, one more to go. On the final one, there's another guard pop up, but we're just gonna... pass the mission before the guard us. And at the end of the mission, it's important here that we'll death warp. So we haven't saved at all since the, we last visited the death room. And when we death warp, we're gonna get back to the death room straight away. And we're back. Ah, uh, yes, very fun loadings. Okay, so the next errand, we are supposed to... You remember GTS and Andreas have this mission where you're supposed to tag a... Spray a bunch of tags, and so that's what this errand is. You're gonna have to climb up to five billboards and spray the tags. Anyway, there's a bit more complicated lore coming up soon. Uh, I'm just gonna show this cutscene, let you watch... Oh, hang on. Oops. Yo, oh, you... there you go. Mira. So Grigo was praying over your tag, man. Hey, don't worry, man. I'll paint over it again tomorrow. It'll be even better, too. You know, I've been working on my wrist technique to get a really smooth blending of the color. What's going on over there? Do my eyes deceive me? Is that white male culturally misappropriating the techniques of this land's beautiful indigenous minorities? Get those triggered fingers ready, guys, gals, and others. We've got ourselves a transgressor to cancel permanently. All right, so there you go. That's the complicated lore of this uh, Aaron. And I guess any of you guys uh, from the 2010s will understand the internet references. Anyway. It's a straightforward mission. All you do is just stack the, all the five billboards. Uh, hang on, I need to get grenades here. Very important. For another errand later on. But anyway, yeah. So, it's a straightforward uh, mission. Uh, there are enemies chasing you, but it's easy to run away from them. You're down to 
Oh, I forgot to use. <laughs> I forgot one little thing. I should have used the speed vitamin X item. Does it boosts your walking speed? And so, if it boosts your speed, then obviously it's useful for speedruns. And so remember that we still haven't saved at all throughout this errand. So right after this errand, I'm just going to do another death warp to go back to my previous save point, which is at the death room. Uh, which lets us to teleport again. And so it's done again. I'm going to death warp and get back to the death room. Okay, next Aaron. Like, time to say goodbye to the death room uh, for today, for in, for the Tuesday, because uh, this Aaron will trigger a force checkpoint, which will uh, forces us to have a safe point, and we won't be able to get to the death room anymore after this. But anyway, so we are supposed to deliver a package on. Onto inside this patch up here, but before that, I'm going to do one little trick. So a bit of spoiler. Like uh, after we go to the patch shop and deliver the package, we're going to have some extra errands. One of them we have to beat down a dog. So before the dog spawn, I'm just going to put this grenade so to insta instantly kill the dog. But wait, hang on, this is a pacifist run, right? Right? Now, there's a reason why the graded kill won't count Hi there. I'm here in the stats, and you'll see why later. No, no, also, do a quick save here. So after I deliver the package, I need to go back to the front door, and it's easier to do that part to go back there instead of just walking it normally. Okay. So, story of this game, we got turned into a cat. Uh, damn it! I think I messed up the grenade trick there. All right, I think I messed up the grenade trick. Uh, the dog should have been killed immediately when it spawned, but I think I placed the grenade in the wrong position there. So I have to do this normally. Okay, so the way you finish this game normally in the pacifist way. You piss on the ball, and eventually the dog will drink the piss, and you win the errand. Anyway, yeah, so I was supposed to kill the dog with the granite there, and it wouldn't count on the... It wouldn't count on the kill count, because the granite is placed by the postal dude. While at the moment you're playing as a cat, it counts as a different player, and the granite doesn't count to... Somehow the game doesn't uh, consider those grenades to be put by yourself. But I thought I kind of messed up the trick though. I think I placed the grenade at the wrong position so it doesn't trigger, unfortunately. It's gonna be cool if it triggers. I don't even need to see the dog. And we still need to wait as well until... Uh, the dog haven't drank the piss as well. If we just do the normal way of like pissing on the ball, then it's there's some RNG there. Waiting when the, the dog bring the piss, like we can't control when the AI will bring it. And we just hope to, we just need to hope the dog will drink it before we finish the last add-on here. There you go. Uh, why is the dog invisible? Uh, okay, this is the first time it happens. For some reason the dog is in, oh, see those grenades there in front of his house? Yeah, I guess it. For some reason, it doesn't hit him, and when it spawns, unfortunately. But anyway, I don't know why the dog is invisible in this cutscene. I've never seen that before. But yeah, the dog just... Uh... Hang on. I think this is a new glitch. 
the dog is somehow invisible and it was supposed to die already just now but it doesn't oh well i just have to do this again okay yeah, there you go it comes okay so we done our errands okay important part of this cat so basically the dude wakes up wakes back up and very important to pick the milk now the last errand of the day it's in the police station and the fastest way to go to the police station is to get arrested so earlier we flashed our pants so that the cop chases us and now we'll just let ourselves get arrested oh. ah actually uh. Ah, there's one little trick I want to showcase for the next errand, but ah, I forgot to pick up an item for it. Oh, whatever. I'll just do the easier, easier way then. Good thing I caught you before they threw you into the slammer. Yeah, I can't drop anything. Yeah. All right, I'll just do this the simple way. So here, so this we are supposed. To, so the errand is called pay fine. There's two paths on it. We can either like, uh, get parking tickets from cars outside, which is the good legal path, or we'll just drop this illegally. So on the illegal path. The police station is gonna be locked, and we are supposed to escape by hacking through the police terminal. But we'll trigger like ragdoll, and for some reason, the game thinks we have escaped by doing that, and we could just end the day immediately. Hey, Don't ask me why. I've... This game's coding is something else. And again, on the start of Wednesday, I'm just going to press quick save on the loading screen, and that will get us to the death death room. Which lets us to teleport to multiple places very quickly. Alright, so if any of you guys remember in Postal 2, we have this petition mission and we're gonna be doing the same thing. Although it works a bit differently in this game. Basically, there's no RNG in the uh, in whether the petition will react or not. Any pe unarmed NPCs will sign your petition if you threaten them with a gun. And in the same time, we're going to do this uh, errand in Kani Island. Oh, shit. Uh, hang on. Something I gotta check. I might have messed up something. Okay. Hang on. I have to turn off aim resistance for this errand to shoot these blockers. Okay. So, while well, in the same time, while grabbing petty shits, I'm going to do the actual errand this Kanye Island, where you're supposed to uh, shoot power, uh, blow up power boxes inside this uh, team, team park. Damn it, so if the NPC got scared by the gunshots, I can't ask petition for them. And so, yeah, there's uh, quite a lot of RNG in how, like, the NPCs react. Oh, uh, crap, my health is low. Do I have health pot? Oh, 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 oh. This isn't good. Uh, I only have one petition, that's actually very bad. Okay, there we go. It's gonna death for pipe, but this stage kinda sucks. I only have one petition. Normally I'll get like around three petitions here, but the NPC's reactions are kinda unlucky this time. Oh well. Wow, Paul Dinet, hold on a minute. B that is a very, very comfortable to use. How dare you? Anyway, alright. Uh, now we're just going to teleport to a different place for a different errand. Hi, welcome to the fuck up room. Looks like we fucked up. I'm wrong. And while walking to the next errand, we're going to Not get more petitions. Fault, but I have Hopefully this time we will be luckier. Now again, with the petitions, there's no RNG in whether the the NPC will uh, accept our petition or not. But there's RNG in like where they escape, and if they escape in a direction which scares other NPCs, then we might not be able to use. It might scare other NPCs and might make them unusable for petitions. Okay, and if they run away in a bad direction, I might just have to quick save and quick load, which unfortunately triggers some loading. So on an actual speed run, like uh, we time this based on IGT, not RTA. So doing this quick save and quick load doesn't really cost uh any time. So we can just quick save and quick load multiple times on the same NPC if we want to. But I'm sure it's gonna be kinda annoying to watch for you guys. How about you sign this petition while you still have both your arms attached? Okay. Still not allowed. 
I have a petition in this hand and a gun in the other. Choose wisely. Okay, I'll sign it. Don't run. Okay, fit. I've got a mag full of compelling reasons why you should Get sign this here, petition. Oh, I'll do whatever you say. Oh, what the? Uh, can I have one more? I'll grab one more. Would you like to sign this petition? Or would you rather check to see if this gun is loaded? Alright, alright, whatever you say, man. Okay, that should be fine. Actually, I could get one more. You better sign this petition, ah, never mind. Unless the NPC wasn't looking. Where the sun don't shine. Okay, time for the actual errand. Installing bidets. Alright, chat, I see you guys earlier already dis uh, have discussing bidets a bit. So that's what the next mission coming up soon is about. Uh, but before that, we're going to trigger one glitch. We're gonna run the scooter, get inside, and dismount and rack doll at the same time. And that will trigger. A, so I switched to third person view here, and you could see the bug. The postal dish body is stuck on this position earlier, so wherever I move, the bu actual body is still there. And that is actually very advantageous. Uh, yes, Gaming Master is John St. John. It's the, yeah, it's the Duke Nukem's uh, voice actor. So again, yeah, so the dude's body is still left on the scooter there, while my camera is somewhere away. And in the next mission here, we are going. it's like a long level with a lot of enemies. But because my body isn't actually in here, the enemies can't see me and they can't attack me. And yes, yeah, so another way to call this is an astral projection. So you hear a bunch of enemies, they do nothing to me. Cause uh, I'm I'm not here, I'm somewhere else. So they won't disrupt me while I'm installing these beadets. And this mission ends up being very, very smooth. One bidet down, four more to go. Okay, there's another upcoming trick here. The door in the center will lead to a boss. Normally it should be only unlocked after you install all the other beadets. But we're going to do a glitch to... Ah, damn it. Did I not make it work? Okay, it works. Good. But I use a glitch with the cat rocket to unlock the door prematurely. Uh, so that we... we Yes. And that lets us walk less. It's not a huge glitch in terms of time save. But it's a cool one to show. And we just have three more bidets to install. I just have to say though, as someone from an Asian country that where everyone uses B all the time, I really relate to this game. B dead is much better than toilet paper. I don't know why Westerners like to use toilet paper. To be honest, it's like a it wastes much more time in, in uh, cleaning yourself, and it's not as clean as well because it's dry. You don't clean all of the dirt. So thank you very much to this game. Oh, also one thing I want to show. Listen to this music. You guys enjoyed the music there earlier? A very fine uh, musical piece. Anyway, last beat that coming up. So normally after the last beat that you still have to escape this level. But because of the scooter warp glitch earlier. So we finish it and so the scooter glitch, I could warp back to my previous uh, scooter position. And that let me go out of bounds and escape the beaded combat immediately. Ah uh, yes, I mean, uh, very enlightening discussion in the chat regarding beadets. I very appreciate it. Anyway, next errand, time to do another push-up warp. Haven't been seeing it in a while, isn't it? Oops. Uh. Okay.
Uh, oh no, I might do the... Oh no, oh no, oh no. I think I made a mistake here. Uh, I think I quick save and quick load in a... A bit far away from where I'm supposed to go. I might end up warping in different place. Oh well, this is gonna be some time loss. He didn't realize it. How far is this? Eh, uh, not that far. But yeah, I made a bit of mistake there. So at the same time, I need to get some petitions, so let's do it. Alright, three petitions left, so before continuing the next run, I'm just gonna grab a bit more petitions from the NPCs here. I think this one should work. Like Actually, I don't remember if this one works or not. I normally don't need to go to this NPC. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, good. Okay, this one. Would you like to sign your name in ink, or would you prefer your own blood? I'll sign. Just don't hurt me. Okay, one more petition. Uh, I'm just gonna do quick seven quick load instead on the same NPC. So yeah, you could use a quick save and quick load to just uh, do do the petition on the same NPC again. And on the actual speed run, you'll use the loadless timer. So this quick save and quick load will cost very little time overall. I've got a mag full of compelling reasons why you should sign this petition. Don't hurt me, I'll sign. That okay, now time for the actual errand. Uh, so we are supposed to wipe off this uh, pile of poop within the mexican border so the game told us that uh, we should have used a, a fire hose attached to a fire hydrant but that's very slow and if you pick up the mob it's very fast to clean this poop there's an even faster way to do this which is to use a rocket launcher and blow up all of the poop uh, manually by shooting them with rockets but doing that would kill other npcs as well if they are close to the poop and since this is a pacifist run uh, yeah, we don't want to kill people, so we'll just do this the second fastest way. At the same time, there's also other. So the story of this game, is, this mission is that somehow there are fast food workers around here that like to collect these pile of poops, and they attack us when they see us cleaning the poops. That plot makes sense, right, guys? Very sophisticated plot from the running with scissors here. Okay, that's it for the day. I'm just gonna wait until the formations pop up to end the day. In game, there you go. Okay, time for Thursday. So in Thursday, uh, I'm not going to do that room warp because. We are supposed to, uh, the game will send us straight away to, to a place that is not accessible through the death room. And if you use the death room, we're gonna just soft lock the game. Anyway, nice. So we are kidnapped and we are supposed to lose our weapon, but right at the start I mashed the drop weapon button and I got my rocket launcher back that way. Okay, so we are supposed to escape. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to collect a couple of cats here. Okay, that should be enough. Now, the story here. We want to rescue our dog, Champ, before running away from this place. There's four possible positions of the... where the dog is located. And it's completely... R it's like RNG where, where this position is. So if you get the fast one... Nope, this one. So you get the fast one, and it's very fast. Like, if it's the first or second try, we... This errand will be fast, but if it's a third or fourth try, like the dog position is like far away from the exit position. Hey, look, and we have to walk spot. far away, so we just lose one minute there. By like a 50-50 RNG. Uh, it's a very annoying part of this game. Uh, basically, it's like a complete RNG, whether we get it or not, 50-50. And we've told the devs about this, so that uh, maybe they could change this errand a bit, so that the position is fixed, and there's no RNG in this. And... They might add it on a later patch one day, but uh, it's not there in, at the moment, unfortunately. So for the time being, we still have to... Yeah, we, uh, we still have to deal with this 50-50 uh, gacha RNG in the middle of the run. Hey, there's champ. And we got the last position, which is the worst. And now that we got the dog back, nothing. we're just gonna death part to the previous location, so we don't have to walk back. 
Don't worry, the dog is fine. He's invisible. Okay. The only area where I quick saved near this uh, gondola so that I could just death port back quickly and. That's the air then. Basically, if you try to grind for a good time in this game, so it's a complete RNG. So 50-50 is a chance when you reach this part, whether you run dice or not, by complete RNG. Very good speed game, isn't it? Anyway, next part of the game, so we're gonna do the push-up glitches again. This one is a bit inconsistent. So um, if I'm unlucky, I might have to do a few tries for this. Damn it. I regret nothing. That's gonna death port back to the previous safe position, so I could do do the push-up glitch again. Okay. Hopefully it works this time. To be reincarnated as a butterfly. Uh, that doesn't work. Damn it. I have to practice this. Uh, push, push up a bit more. Let's see if it worked this time. Okay, there you go. It works. So again, we use that push up. Uh. Push up when you combine with the ragdoll and the weapon wheel, which uh, slows down the game. It somehow launches you very far away at a very high speed, so yeah, you could travel between the different errands at a uh, very quickly that way. So again, just to show how far I flew, so I was here, uh, right at the corner, and I flew to the middle of the map imme immediately, in like a few seconds. Okay, there's poor protester there. So if you guys play Postal 2, you know what it means when you see protesters. Anyway, so there's a bit of story in this mission. So eventually protesters are gonna burn this place down and we have to go up and while well, extinguish a bunch of fires. But we're going to skip all of that. So before starting the actual story, I'm going to use the cat rocket to make a quick save right at the top floor here. Now time for the actual mission. But because we have uh, have put a quick save right at the top there, we just could just death warps immediately. And again, we are supposed to extinguish a bunch of fires before we reach the top and save the casino that way. But we'll just warp here immediately and finish the errand straight away, keeping all of the enemies and all of the objective that we are supposed to do. Okay, so. The next errand is called Vote for Governor. So guys, chat. Uh, vote if you want to vote for the left wing or the right wing. Again, vote for the left wing or right wing while I travel there. Oh, why do I do put a cat rocket here when I'm supposed to voting? So there's two ways of doing this errand. First, you go to the voting machine and vote how you normally supposed to vote as a as an ethical citizen. And the second is you vote with the cat. So I'm just going to clip here and put right wing as the chat has voted. And there you go, we've done the vote. Now you guys might be wondering, hey hey, this is a pacifist run, right? Didn't I just kill someone? Oh, did I really just kill someone? See, the game says I didn't murder anyone. For some reason, the kill with Cat Rocket isn't counted towards the statistics. So yeah, I didn't kill anyone, guys. Trust me. Alright, it's a good launch.
So the next add-on is a game tester. So we're basically going to be a game tester on a PR game. So in here, we're gonna get sent to a PR world and it's gonna be a long, long level. So you see there, five levels. We are supposed to do five different levels of like 3D platforming. But instead, the cat rocket allows for even more. So this door is locked, but we're just gonna click through it with the cat rocket. And it's gonna trigger a story dialogue that is supposed to unlock the level four. So we're just gonna skip through level four immediately. And when the dialogue, the next level is coming right up. and on the actual level, instead of doing the platforming level, I'm just gonna send a cat rocket through here, and somehow the game thinks we completed the level. So now we pass level four of this by shooting a rocket on it, and the last level again we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to skip all of those platforming, and now it's done. Uh, yes, E1D. This is a pacifist run, so I'm not killing anyone. As you see earlier, like, uh, my kill count in the game starts. So, yeah, as we seen earlier, the kill count here is still zero. So, this is a pacifist run. I definitely did not murder anyone. I'm a very peaceful person. Anyway, next add-on. It's gonna be a long one. But before that, I'm going to do a push-up again. To fly to the next add-on. Uh, I might actually fly a bit lower. Oh, well. Yeah, actually, I think this is a bit low. Uh, what? Okay, just to recap what happened on the last errand, we are supposed to go through five different platforming levels, but we just shoot cat rockets to skip those levels instead. Why does it work? Uh, it's a complicated story, so don't have the time to tell it, unfortunately, but yeah, basically, it works for some reason. Ah, this push-up launch, I actually kind of flew at the wrong angle here, so... It's... I'm gonna have to walk a bit more. So we're going to race stadium, and we're going to race. <clears throat> so for the first time ever in the Postal series, we'll have a race. Oh, hang on, does Postal 3 have it? I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah, for the first time ever in the Postal series, we are going to have an actual race. Uh, crew Mercy, this isn't a world record at the time, so this is just a showcase. Anyway. Uh, alright. You see this? Uh, hang on. What is it? So, we are not supposed to carry a weapon inside. We have a weapon. So, we're just gonna drop the first weapon. And we still have one more weapon. Somehow, the game thinks a ro the rocket isn't a weapon and lets us pass through. And that lets us use the rocket. So, very legit race here. Alright, so, all of that happens, there's a lot of things to explain there, it happens very quickly, but now I just have to do the actual race. So, to explain, first of all, the story of this of this mission, the Mafia has gambled a very huge amount on this Red Racer, because the Red Racer is bad, and if the Red Racer wins, then they get a very big payout on the gambling. So, we are supposed to fix this race, we are supposed to, like, tackle the other racers, to stop them from winning and give the Red Racer the victory. Of course, uh, we are not supposed to bring a weapon here, so it's normally to do that. You have to tackle all those other racers, and it's a rather hard thing to do. But yeah, we use an exploit to get our rockets passed through the door, and we just shot all the other racers immediately. Now, first of all, this is a pacifist run, but again, as you've seen earlier, uh, killings with cat rocket somehow doesn't doesn't count in the kill stats, and this run is still technically a pacifist run. Hey, right, cruel mercy. So uh, I've run this game some time ago. For the time being, I don't have plans to improve it. Maybe one day, I'm not sure. But yeah, for the time being, I think my the current the current record in the in this game is solid enough. Oops. Uh, oops. 
Now, anyway, so as I said earlier, so in this game, we are supposed to have the Red Racer win. But as you see, I'm like far ahead of him. Then what will happen if I win? So we are not supposed to win. But what I will do is that I will color my own scooter with... The, I will make my own scooter red by coloring them with the other people. But uh, oh, this isn't good. Damn it, my scooter got stuck. This isn't good. I'm just gonna put blood on my own scooter so that the so that they think the red racer won instead of me. And yeah, so there's a secret ending to this errand where if you if you blood it your scooter with the corpse of the other racers and you win, they will think the red racer is win winning and that will trigger the good ending of this errand. I wonder out of all the viewers here how many how many of you guys actually make sense of what's uh, of all of my explanation for the past few minutes? Yes, PBS, PBS are cosmic brain indeed. Anyway, just to see how bad the red racer is, like earlier I messed up a lot, slowed down a lot, but I'm still winning. And before we end the day, I'm just going to pass through these walls. Oh no, did I get stuck? Oh no. Uh, this ain't good. I regret nothing. Uh, I accidentally get. I should pick up back my pistol earlier, which I dropped, because I need the pistol for another errand. But I might have accidentally get my. Oh no, I lost my gun. Uh, well, this isn't good. Where can I get a gun? Uh, is that an easy way to get a gun? Um, anyway, uh, a bit of ad break here. Nothing is going to happen. I did not do any cheating or anything. Okay, start of Friday. Again, at the start of cutscene, I'm just going to press quick save on the start loading screen and that will send me to the death room. For some reason in Friday, the death room is full of dogs. And just gonna go to the next errand. So, okay, the upcoming errand, we have a huge skip. There's two ways to do this skip. I'm going to do the simpler way. Plus, we have a fancier way, which is faster in IGT for a loadless time speedrun, but it will trigger two extra loading screen, which is gonna be annoying for you guys to watch, I guess. So I'm just gonna do the simpler method. Oh, I also need to do this It's like gonna do the simpler method. And what I'll do, I'll ragdoll jump to this zap zone. So this zap zone should have transferred me to a different loading zone. But because I use ragdoll jump through it, it doesn't trigger and I could jump out of bounds. And when I jump out of bounds here, the game will send me to the end of the of this long level immediately. So again, there was supposed to I supposed to like walk a lot and go through a bunch of enemies and all of that. But never mind, I'm just gonna walk do the out of bounds warp and the game sent me right near the end. Gonna need the ragdoll jump here, otherwise it will trigger an autosave. At the temple entrance, and that will mess up my death warp later on. And that's it. And because we haven't triggered any of the auto checkpoints in the story, uh, I could just death warp back to the death room immediately. So again, we are supposed to escape through this dungeon and all of that crap, but again, I'm just gonna death warp back and we could continue the game. Next run again. It's a good day to die. Okay. 
So next island is inside this mall, and we are supposed to fight a bunch of enemies to reach the boss of this island. So the boss is at the top floor of this mall, and we are supposed to again open uh, some roadblocks and fight a bunch of enemies. But I'm just going to use this cat rocket to reach the top floor straight away, and that will spawn the boss immediately. And for the next two shots, I'm not going to use the cat rocket anymore. I'm just going to use a regular heat seeker. Uh, uh, actually, uh, oops, I <laughs> I shot at the wrong angle there. Right. So the heat seeking rockets will just gonna directly go to the boss. And the story of this mission is that uh, the boss doesn't actually die, so it doesn't count as a kill, and you're, it's still a pacifist run. Okay, time for the second last mission of the game. We're just going to do another push up. Okay, uh, I'm. Is this good? Okay, this is fine. Okay, I think this should be fine. So anyway, just to give you guys well, what's going on. The, just to show you guys what's going on. Uh, I flew from here. This is the mall where I flew earlier. All the way to the corner here. To the point where the post menu can't even show my cursor. Because that will warp me to the next errand place. The dam. So it's supposed to be like a long level again with a bunch of enemies and all. I actually kind of messed up. Okay, I'm just going to show you what this mission is about. Like if I do the warp co correctly there, I'm going to get to the end of the game. End of this errand straight away. But instead, uh, I kind of messed up a bit the angle a bit there. So I have to start from this. Uh, start from scratch, but it's still fast. So we could, there's another exploit we could pull to show. So we're gonna do this and pick up the prop. And if I do the ragdoll correctly, I could just flee immediately to the top. Oops. Ah, that doesn't work. It's not kind of hard. Ah, damn it. And I have to practice a bunch of this pick if I want to do proper speedruns. Oh, that doesn't work. Not sure what the angle to do this trick. Uh, Ooh, that's a this run is very bad now. Is this top floor? Nope. Okay, why do I keep messing up this? Damn it, why this is a warp? Uh, this is embarrassing. Mm. <sighs> Damn it. Hum, you guys see nothing. You guys are seeing nothing. Anyway. So, we did the warp directly to the end. And we shoot this machine to trigger the bad ending. And that's it. Anyway, yeah, if I didn't mess up the warp, I'll just go there immediately at the end and I could uh, finish the game straight away. Oh man, this, this runs so bad. <laughs> okay, now the reason I'm doing passive is run. So, we are supposed to fight multiple bosses here. But if it's a pacifist run, uh, the game will let us to go to the final boss immediately. Instead of doing a lot of bosses. Instead of doing multiple bosses, we just have to fight one. So I'm just gonna fly there straight away. Uh, okay, good.
So again, just gonna do push up warp to fly here straight away. And since we have to fight the boss, you guys may be wondering, so how will we do this run, a pacifist run? As a pacifist run, if we have to fight the boss. Uh, so if we kill it normally this time, it will actually count as a kill. Unlike so, unlike the previous hard rock boss where the game purposely doesn't count it as a kill, because the story, in that story, uh, we didn't kill the boss. At this time, there's another secret pacifist trick into it. So, the milk that we pick up back in Tuesday, we'll place it here. And a bit of spoiler here, but the final boss is Lactose Intolerant. So, if you get, when you give him the milk, he fell down by himself. And it counts as a pacifist because it's not us who kill it, to kill him. And also that skips the boss immediately, so we don't have to fight, do a long fight against him, and it yeah, makes it very fast, obviously. Anyway, now we just gotta jump here to trigger the final exit. So after the boss fight, we are supposed to go down the elevator, but instead of that, we'll just jump through the balcony, go out of bounds, and uh, go down to, back to the ground uh, much faster. Okay, so time for the final exit. We are supposed to go back to the starting point of this game. And I'm just gonna do... Uh, I messed up this one, do I? Yeah, this doesn't work. I messed up my push-up there. Hang on, let me just get back. Ah, so many mistakes in this one. Okay, just gonna do another push-up. Still doesn't work. Okay, what the hell? If you watch my actual PB, like uh, the run one, much much smoother in here, like there's very little mistakes on it compared to what I've done today. Okay, it's supposed to work. I'm not sure why. I... Damn it. <laughs> well, this is embarrassing. So many mistakes throughout, the, throughout this run. Okay, fifth time the charm. There you go. Trust me, like if you actually practice this properly, it's it's consistent. Yeah, I just uh, messed up quite a lot today, so I didn't properly practice like the angles and all. Anyway, the run is about to over. Time it's to celebrate. And when we finally exit the town, it'll be time. And that's it for the run. Now, even more glitches. So, if you do a pacifist run in this older version, so the game is blocked and the credit ending doesn't show up. Instead, we're just gonna get warped back to the main menu without seeing the ending scene and the credits. Very good game. So yeah, just a note, this run is done on like the older version. And the current version is, uh, yeah, some of the glitches uh, have been fixed. And and the current version, yeah, if anyone wants to try to run with the current version, there's going to be some different tricks on it. And nobody has done it yet, but if someone wants to do it, I think we'll probably make a new category out of it. Because uh, yeah, the run is going to be quite a lot different compared to what we see today. And yeah, a bit of shout out to the other uh, Postal 4 runners, uh, Spectral, Sir Wolfie, Asra, and Hoon, the moderator. Uh, yeah, a lot of these tricks are found by them. Like, I, I won't be able to find all of these tricks myself. Like, on the first like two or three months when this game was released, every single day we found new strategies, new ideas, new tricks. It was a crazy three months. Like, this run evolved from like more than two hours to like uh, 30, 35 minutes at the end. And yeah, so that's it for Postal 4. And. 